Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Jack and I'm the Avid Assistant. So I'll try and keep this one brief. This is just going to be a short video going over the latest version of Avid 2022.7 which came out on July 7th. Um, this is just to see what the new features are and uh, see if there's anything to get excited about. Probably not, but worth the upgrade. Um, a lot of bug, bugs have been fixed. I'll do a live demonstration testing out anything that is new and we'll see how it works. So without further ado, Let's dive right in and take a look at it. Right, now of course the first thing to notice here is that if you're on macOS, you're now clear to update to version 12.4. If, if you've been good and you've been avoiding updating because Avid hasn't qualified, then you're, you're now good to go ahead and, you know, Except that annoying Apple prompt telling you to do the software update. But enough of OS support, let's get into Avid and take a look at what's changed. Though as always, just make sure you've got a backup of your current macOS state before updating, or any OS state really. Just always good to have a regular backup going. Right, so straight off the bat, let's address the elephant in the room, which is Titler Plus. Now, Avid is saying that in this version there's been significant updates, so let's give it a whirl. And I'm just going to move the effect editor out the way just now. So, I don't know, title, test. We'll try, I guess, making a you know, a lower third. So I'll put this here. Um, make a little shape down here. In honor of Avid, we'll make it purple. Yep. Right there. That to the front. All right, now let's see if we can transition this to come on. So I'll grab them all. Yep, group layers or control G. All right, so now we can move that all as one thing. Right now, I'm going to try and have it slide on. Let's see if it'll let me. So, one second forward, add a keyframe. Back, add another keyframe. On this one, I will slide the position over there. And also on this keyframe, um, Gonna see if I can turn down the opacity. Okay, well, I'm gonna change the opacity. It seems to not be keyframeable, interestingly enough. So, lower third's not really a problem there. We can add that in. Um, I even did a test making some temp scrolling credits and didn't have a problem with that either. I uh, was, was able to make it scroll all nicely, centered. I'll try out some different formatting in the next few days for more complex stuff, but so far we're looking good. Right, now the next change you might have actually seen as we were in the title there. I'll jump back in and see uh, Avid's call it the enablers, updated enablers is how they phrased it, but it's basically all these switches, all these toggle switches for the various um, uh, points in effect editor, also in color correction, anywhere where you'll see these, um, have been changed to this little slider, green slider. It's fine, it's a little neater, nicer, it's a little tidier. Um, yeah, but won't make that much of a difference to me, but I mean, it's a nice little touch, it's a bit a little bit clearer as to what's on and off. Right, now, <laughs> one other um, surprising subtle change that 
um, Avid's listed as having added in this version um, is keyboard presets for Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve users. So a uh, keyboard layout that's essentially prepped like the default keyboard in those NLEs. But it's supposed to be down here under keyboards that you can just select and I don't see it. Um, so when I went to check out Abbott's website, they said that if some keyboard mappings do not appear in user settings, click the user profile menu at the top of the window and choose user update user profile to refresh and load the additional options. So I went and did that, update user profile, and no new settings were added. So not sure. Um, I can check again for this in a bit, but this isn't like a feature that I was particularly interested in, so uh, I'm, I'm not sad that I'm missing it, but it is weird that it's not coming up. Um, but yeah, odd. Now, of course, this would have mainly been targeted at um, crossover editors, someone who's accustomed to working in Premiere Pro or DaVinci and they're changing over to using Avid. Um, yeah. I can't see it. So, can't test it. Shame, I was actually curious to see what the default layout was in those applications. Right, now this next one is going to be hard to test. So, down here, this is my primary workspace that I use for recording these videos um, because it puts everything on one screen. Now, apparently, in this latest version, Avid has added, like, a uh, a dual versions of your workspaces that will run on different monitors. So if you suddenly unplug one of your monitors, Avid will be able to detect that and you can still keep using the same workspace um, setting that you have, say if you're always living in edit, um, but there will become like a like a, a, a dual version of this workspace that's tailored to the other monitor, to, tailored to the one monitor setup or the two monitor setup. So I guess the only way I can really try all this is if I unplug my external monitor and just leave it on the laptop and then see if Avid recognizes it. So I'll give it a go, but my monitor can be a little bit temperamental. Um, let's see what this does. Oh, there we go. Your workspaces were set up for a different number of monitors. Now that the number of monitors has changed, would you like to duplicate workspaces for the new configuration? Okay, let's try it. Go. Yes. Oh, nice. So do we now get duplicated um, versions of all of my workspaces to the new monitor setup? That's interesting. So I still have all of my tools up, but it'll fit on the new monitor. That is quite handy, actually. I quite like that. So there you go. If you're regularly going back and forth between different kinds of monitor setups, particularly if you're on your laptop Avid or a portable Avid, this could be very handy for you. Okay, that does account for all of the major noticeable changes that you'll see when you go to 2022.7, but there are, of course, a number of fixes, um, the bug fixes that have been addressed that I can't uh, go through because there's just so many. And you'll notice that a lot of these are to do with the Titler Plus. So there's been a lot of work on this, guys. Um, they are clearly making progress. It is getting there. So a lot of bugs squashed. The, the essential resource not available error that has been plaguing a lot of people. I know Avid put out um, uh, a fix for way to install um, this, but not everybody caught it. So this question has been coming up again and again on the Facebook pages. So that's been fixed. Um, project locks, there's just, yeah, I'm not going to go through these. There's so many of them. And you can find the uh, the README um, for this on Avid's website. I'll put a link to it in the video description as well, so, so you can see that. 
Right, so that was my summary of Avid Media Composer 2022.7. Um, not really a whole lot to look at there, but um, a lot of stability improvements and bug fixes, which are always welcome. If anything that video was useful or interesting to you, you should definitely check out the one I did covering all the new features that have been added in the new Avid UI. In that one, I highlighted my top 14 best picks um, of new fit features that were added from 2019.6 all the way through to 2022.4. And in the video description for that video, I've also included a full list of all the other features that were added in that time that I didn't talk about. So definitely worth, worth a look. Uh, good for catch up, especially if you're coming over from 2018 to the newer versions and you can get a whole catch up on all the new features. But until next time, thank you very much for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Hope all your projects are treating you well and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.